To configure the Hyper-V replica, I'm just going to go create a new virtual machine. And I'm going to name this VM2. Generation, uh, we'll just say 2. Memory, we'll leave it on default. Network, we'll stay on default as well. Virtual hard disk, it's going to create a virtual hard drive. And we'll install an operating system later, we'll say. And we are finished. Now to configure the replication, there are a few things we have to do. There is a Hyper-V setting for replication, but you only need to configure it on the target machine. Now I'm on the source machine right now, but if I go to replication configuration, you'll see enable this computer as a replica server. Well, I already host the virtual machine. I want to replicate it to RTS serve 2. So unlike the migration, there is nothing you enable on the source machine, only the target. So if we go to RTS serve 2, on RTS serve 2, I'm going to right click the server and go to Hyper-V settings. And there I have this replication configuration. Pretty straightforward to configure. I'm just going to choose to enable this computer as a replica server. I'm going to use Kerberos uh, over HTTP port 80. Now it says data sent over this network will not be encrypted. The connection itself is not encrypted, but Kerberos authentication is encrypted. So it's not as if your credentials or anything like that would be clear text. You could use certificates, but this would require that you have a certificate that's been issued to you already. Now you would do this. This would be required if you were in a separate Active Directory forced. You'd have to use certificate based. But all of our machines are in the same domain, so we're gonna use Kerberos. And at the bottom, allow replication from any authenticated server, or you could say allow replication from specified servers. Now I'm just gonna choose from any authenticated server. So that'd be any Hyper-V server in your forest actually. And I'm just gonna choose okay. That's all I have to do in the Hyper-V itself. Now it does give me this message that says, configure the firewall to allow inbound traffic. Now one would think that it would do this for you, but it does not. What I have to do is go to start and I'm just gonna search firewall. The Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. When this firewall comes up and I select inbound rule, if we go down the list, we'll get to the H section. You'll see now there are some Hyper-V uh, replica rules. So there's this Hyper-V replica HTTP not enabled. I just have to go to that and I click enable and OK. There's another one, the Hyper-V replica HTTPS. So if you were using certificates over HTTPS, you would uh, choose that. But I don't need to choose that one. So that's the change I needed to make in the firewall. So now this is done. And it even tells you, go to the firewall and enable Hyper-V replica HTTP lister TCP in. That's what we just did. So, okay. The Hyper-V server's configured. Firewall is configured. So notice there's no virtual machine right now on RTS Serve 2. Well, now if we go back to RTS Serve 1, I'll cancel that view there. When I right click VM2, there is an option to enable replication. When I choose that, I get this before you begin. Just gives you some basic information about replication. I'm going to choose next on that. Now it says, who is your replica server? I'm going to choose RTS serve two. That's our target server that we want to replicate to. So I'll just click next for that. We are using Kerberos authentication. That is on port 80. So make sure that says port 80. Make sure this is on Kerberos. I will leave compress the data that's transmitted over the network. I'm going to leave that checked. Just more efficient. My virtual machine only has one virtual hard drive. It's this vm2.vhdx. So that is checked. So we'll click next. Now it says how frequently should changes be replicated from one to the other. We can do five minutes, which is the default. 30 seconds or 15 minutes would be the other two options. 
if we were to click this. So whatever you believe is appropriate for your environment, and this is easily changed anytime uh, in the future, but I'm going to leave it on the default of five minutes. If I wanted recovery points, like checkpoints, I can say maintain only the latest, or I can say create additional uh, recovery points every hour, whatever our preference is, but I'm going to say maintain only the latest because these can consume massive amounts of space once you have a lot of these that exist. So I'll say maintain only the latest and we'll just go next. The last option is for the initial replication. Now let's say this virtual machine is only 20 gigs in size. Well, if it's only 20 gigs, I'm comfortable sending that across most networks. So send initial copy over the network. But let's say this virtual machine has 200 gigs of data on it. Maybe I don't want to send 200 gigs of data across the network. So what I could do, send an initial copy using external media, and you could simply browse for a location like a USB drive or something, and you export this virtual machine to that USB drive. You'll take that and ship it to your other location. You'll import, like there's an option here to import virtual machine. You would import that into your other Hyper-V server. Now let's say it's taken you three days from the time you came here and exported to the time it's imported. But once you've done that, now when they replicate, they will only replicate changes that have occurred since you exported. So instead of 200 gigs of data that you have to now replicate across your uh, WAN connection, you're only replicating anything that changed after you export it. So that can save you bandwidth. But I'm going to choose the first option, send an initial copy over the network. Now, even if you are replicating a lot of data, one of the advantages is you can actually schedule this. So maybe I am looking at dozens and dozens of gigabytes of data. I could schedule this to start at a certain time. So I could say I want it to start Friday the 9th at... 6 p.m. If everybody's out of the office, then I may not be concerned about how much bandwidth it consumes. So it just depends on what your goal is. But I'm going to choose to start replication immediately. And next, a summary of everything we defined. RTS Serve 2 is our replica server. We are replicating over port 80, which is going to use Kerberos authentication. This data will be compressed. VHDs not selected for replication says none. To me, the wording of that is always odd. We are replicating all the VHDs associated with our VM, which is only the one virtual drive. It will replicate every five minutes. Additional recovery points, only the latest. And we will initially replicate using a network and we will start immediately. Well, if we just click finish, it's going to enable replication. Now, some things I can see. If I click on replication now, I can see uh, this is the primary, meaning this is the source. Replication state, replication enable. Uh, health says normal. I can see the primary server is RTS serve one. The replica is RTS serve two. And I can see the last time they synchronized, which is the same as saying the last time they replicated. Well, now, if I go to RTS serve two, We had no virtual machine when we were here before, but now VM2 shows up. So this is a replica of that other machine. So unlike the live migration, you're not moving a machine from one host to another. You are simply having a copy of that, a replica, run on another machine. So if the VM2, if that's running on RTS Serve 1 and it fails for whatever reason, it will just start running on RTS Serve 2 with the same exact configuration within five minutes. Uh, we know they are synchronized because that's our default replication interval. So it's fairly straightforward to enable the replication. You just need a couple of Hyper-V servers to do it.